What's up, military surplus connoisseurs, or whoever you may be? Oh, I wow, recently this picked up this KZS Brexa suit from Golden Bear Surplus, and I couldn't wait to review it for you. I have had the suit for a whole five minutes. Okay, like a day. This isn't going to be an insane in-depth review that has months of intense scientific super Chernobyl torture test trials in it, but it will give you a good idea of what the suit is, its features, and some very light history and information about the KZS Brexa suit. If you're into military surplus, Eastern Bloc gear, or you are just curious about what this corn-fed American has to say about a suit that's older than his grandpa, this video might be right up your alley. So let's dive right into this review. Starting with the top, the top is made of a sock-like mesh or grandma blanket material that is breathable but also holds in heat like a thin sweater. The material is thin and meshy because it was made to be an oversuit worn over other clothing, but can be and has been worn as is in several conflicts including the Soviet-Afghan war. It has six buttons that form a button closure that spans the torso. The top features no pockets but has several buttons and buttonhole like loops that aid in blousing the suit. On the sleeves there are two buttons that are inside the sleeve. These buttons correspond with the two button loops on the outer sleeve. To use this feature, roll the sleeve as you would of any other military garment, with the top off and rolling neatly and approximately to the size of an ID card or three inches wide. Once you get about two rolls in, Hook the buttons on the loops and do your final roll. After doing this on both sleeves, it should look something like this. There is another similar button blousing system on the back for the hood. It reminds me a lot of the Taz 57-70 field jacket hood system, but it is more crude. I'm not totally sure if I'm using this button system correctly or not, but anyways, to suit a blouse, the hood, attach the loop on the button, and let be. This is what it looks like. It doesn't stay on well, probably because I'm using it wrong, so if you know how to properly do this, let me know in the comments. On the topic of the hood, there are two drawstrings that are used to tighten the hood to the user's head. It also should be known that this suit was made for snipers, or at least that's what the internet says, so the hood is oversized to act as a crude veal for peak Spetsnaz bravado. Due to the suit's mesh-like construction, you can actually see through the material while covering your face. All of the top has the same thickness of material excluding the sleeves. Just above the wrist to the end of the sleeve, it is reinforced and noticeably more heavy in material compared to the rest of the suit. I have not seen this in any of my other military garments, but I have noticed that in cases such as the Parson suit and other sniper style suits, there seems to be more cloth or longer sleeves to cover the hands compared to a standard uniform top. Or maybe it's made to roll up and reinforce the elbows? Who knows? All in all, the top is not a total piece of shit and does have good mobility and it is not constricting. Now moving on to the pants. They are made of the same mesh material that the top is made of and features no pockets or buttons. Instead, there are slits in the sides of the pants that allow pass through to trouser pockets underneath. At least, if you aren't commando. The pants have no belt loops or fly. They are held to your waist simply by elastic. I like this feature because my corn-fed American body can fit into these even though they are 28 to 30 inch waist size compared to my usual 32 to 34 inch medium American pants. The bottoms remind me a lot of pajama pants. No pockets, non-constricting, and stretchy. The only place on the pants that shows a difference in material, or rather thickness, is on the knees, which have approximately double the fabric with similar stitching patterns that remind me of the American BDU style pants with their knee reinforcements. Overall, the pants fit me well and are long enough to be tucked in boots or worn with tennis shoes. Crocs without being so long that you're just stepping on the fabric and cursing life. The KZS Brexa suit comes in three sizes. Size 1, size 2, and size 3. I know, very creative. The main difference in sizes is in the trousers. The top is gangster and will fit basically everyone who isn't built like a lotta. My suit is size 2. I can tell this due to the remnants of a tag in the bottom right interior of my top. All of my tags are beyond faded with little to no legible letters, but I can tell it's size 2, well, from the visible 2. There is a mysterious size 3 that was made for taller and wider soldats. They are hard to find nowadays and are overpriced because Ivan from Belarus knows as soon as thick man Tyler from South Carolina spends his hard earned doubloons on a KZS suit for his Farb FSB Alpha kit, he can pocket the 100 plus dollars and say the package was lost in custom. Or he was taken into custody by the custom special forces. I'm just kidding. Frankly, if I had to guess why they are harder to find, it's because the bottoms are more sought after due to us big-boned Americans who have been drying up the supply for decades. 
Also, the biggest size was probably made in lower quantities because there wasn't too many big bone fellas in USSR. I'll leave you to guess why. Alright, that's my suit. Now for some history. The KZS Brexa, or birch suit, started production in the mid-70s, around 1975, and was made for Soviet chemical troops, now known as Russian NBC production troops, which are basically Russia's version of the U.S. military's seaburn troops. The suit was made to be worn over the OKZK-D chemical suit. The reason why it is meshy, cruelly made, and seemingly fragile compared to other uniforms is because it was made to be disposed of after use. A doctor wouldn't keep and reuse a bloody glove after performing medical procedures, would he? With that look on it, you can see why it was a good idea to not shell out single use uniforms that were made to last with quality materials. A lot of people believe that the KZS was made for snipers. That would explain the oversized hood I mentioned earlier, wouldn't it? That actually isn't the case. The hood is oversized to accommodate a helmet underneath. It is actually common to find suits that are missing a hood because troops would field craft helmet covers out of the hood. The KZS suit is a real time capsule of the Cold War. A camouflage suit to conceal seaburn troops in a possible near peer nuclear conflict may have been one of the main purposes of the suit, but like a lot of things issued to soldiers across the globe, it was used in other applications. Even during the Chernobyl nuclear power plant disaster in 1986, liquidators were not seen wearing the KZS suit. Although it makes sense since there was no real reason to conceal themselves during cleanup, however, God knows what was in the plant. Want to know what else was in the 80s? The Soviet-Afghan War. During the Soviet-Afghan War, it wasn't uncommon to see normal infantry wearing KZS suits. They seemed favorable for the average soldier as their light mesh construction was breathable for the hot summers of Afghanistan. Another pattern that was printed in the KZS suit cut was the KLMK suit, which featured a more opaque white and green color palette. However, the KLMK was made in a different cut that wasn't mesh and was also worn during the war. Sometimes they are confused with one another due to the similar pattern shape. During the 1990s, after the breakup of the USSR, the KZS suit made sporadic appearances in the Russian Federation's military. During this transitional period, KZS suits started to be worn by questionable individuals doing questionable things in questionable places. This is a pattern shared across a lot of Russian gear, as it was surplus and bought up by several militaries, paramilitaries, and militia groups across the world. Nowadays, you will see the KZS suit adorned by airsofters such as myself, and in the collections of military surplus collectors. Although the KZS Brexa mesh suit ceased production sometime in the 1990s, the Brexa pattern has lived on being printed on all sorts of garments, and is still in use by multiple units in the Russian military and security forces. Now for some closing remarks. I have been wanting a KZS Brexa suit for a long time, so when I saw it listed for a cool 50 bucks on Golden Bear Surplus, I was quick to acquire one. As of the time of making this video, you can still purchase the suit on Golden Bear Surplus's shop. I cannot wait to use this when playing Airsoft and just wearing it for that Cold War drip aesthetic. I do plan on making a video after I use this suit for 6 months or more as a showcase of long term wear slash use. So stay tuned for that. One of the reasons for making this video is the last review I could find was 7 plus years ago along with a camo test by the legendary Brent0331. I hope this video can bring attention back to the KZS Brexit suit so it isn't forgotten, or to help someone learn a little bit more about the suit if they were just curious. I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching, and see you next time. Peace.